CBS presents this program in color. This is a wonderful story about a group of children that all the experts had given up on. The experts all said, you can't do anything with them, institutionalize them. And these parents said, no, I'm going to reach those kids. Young, young, young. They've hooked up with a clinic that uses music and an awful lot of love to reach these children. I mean, it's just an amazing story. What can you do for children who are all but unreachable? Those kids who are locked in a world of their own. Children the experts have given up on. Well, for the children you're about to meet, their world was unlocked with a combination of love and hope and music. And for their parents, the result was something that sounded and looked like a miracle. Hiya, Marisa. Good morning, Marisa. Good morning. Good morning. How's big girl? You hear the music, Marisa? To observe Marisa, you would never suspect that anything was wrong. I mean, this was a beautiful girl. We really did not know anything was wrong with her till the day that we were taking on from the hospital. Who's that? Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? Awesome. I mean, with the tantrums, all the other things, this is a great little guy. There's one world for us. And another for children like Marisa and Joshua. Joshua is 11 years old and lives in New York's rugged South Bronx with his mother, Robin Shaw. He was born two and a half months premature, blind and autistic. How much did he weigh when he was born? One pound and 12 ounces. Wow. He was very early. Because you knew this was too soon to have a baby. It's not ready yet. He's not, this baby's not ready yet. Reach. Oh, you can do it. Five-year-old Marisa lives in a quiet New Jersey Good suburb girl. with her parents, Linda and Gary Thomas. Hold on. Do they know what caused Marissa's problems? Basically, it was bad luck. Just bad luck. Did the doctors give you any prognosis in that first day or two? Well, basically, they said that you shouldn't expect much. You shouldn't expect her to walk, talk, sit up, know you're her parents. Or see. Or see. You just had a feeling that there was someone in there and that she is intelligent. Monkey? Monkey? And that's all it is. It's love. Here it is. This is your child. I don't care if he doesn't see. I don't care if you don't understand his speech. He is my child. I love him. And he is a gift from God. I know what you want. I know what you want. I know what you want. Josh and Marisa were written off as hopeless, but their parents refused to believe that. They were determined to reach the lonely world where their children were imprisoned. And they found the key here at the Nordoff Robbins Music Clinic, where the door was unlocked using the power of music. Are these the faces of kids who can't be reached? They come into this world of music, and in this world, they can unfold. <laughs> Clive Robbins has been working with handicapped children since 1954. I was looking for a way to get past these barriers that make it difficult to reach deeply into children. Yeah. Then Robbins met composer Paul Nordoff, and together they found an answer. It was magical to me how music really reached this developmental potential within the children. And they sat up differently, they looked differently. I saw intelligence in their eyes. 
It's about 250. Four years ago, Clive and his wife, Carol, opened an American branch of Nordoff Robbins in New York City. Da, 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 in tempo. We asked the mother of a multiply handicapped teenager once, what do you want music therapy to do for your child, for your son? She said, just bring him joy. He has so little of it in his life. I'm thinking of another child who didn't use her hands. She begins to use a drumstick. It takes four months, but finally she's beating freely and exerting her satisfaction herself, and she's never done this. She starts using her hands in the home, using a fork, turning on the hi-fi and so on. Parents pay a small fee here based on what they can afford, and children get a program tailored to fit their needs. Oh. Look at that, left hand, right hand, I mean. Look at that, it reaches straight up. We raise the cymbal. All the music is improvised. A youngster with muscular problems is encouraged to reach for an instrument whose sound he finds appealing. That's great. Each session is videotaped to keep a record of the improvised music and the child's reaction to it. What do you define as progress? when you're working with a child. If a child begins to feel different about himself, if he begins to, to look at people, to relate to them, to come in with a smile instead of a look of fear. The child takes that confidence out of the door with him when he goes, and he's more confident in life. All of these are subtle things, but for him, they're milestones. For a child like Marisa, a tiny step can be a giant leap. She's neurologically impaired. She's spastic in all of her limbs. She is blind. She's also intelligent. She's perceptive. She has a sense of humor. And she loves music, something Linda and Gary Thomas already knew. Marisa would change her facial expressions with the different sounds that she was hearing. And that's really where we thought that we had a way of communicating to this girl. Marisa, for her first year, cried a great deal. She was so rejecting of anything new. The, you know, the circle of her life was really very narrow. And if Carol had done that earlier, in, she, would have, she would have freaked out. But what was she doing? She's doing this. Good girl. Let's see what you can do. Ready? The goal with Marisa is to encourage communication and movement. It took more than two years and over 50 sessions, but now she wants to walk and jump. And talk. You were skeptical. Absolutely. When Linda first opened the discussion about this, when did you become a, a believer in the technique? After I went for the first time, it was truly, truly magnificent to see that and to see Marisa as happy as she was and two loving people giving that much to a child. Come on, help me. Come what is help that me. like when you realize I've reached this kid nobody else was able to get through to? Don't you inwardly go, yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and sometimes we go outwardly, yes. <laughs> That's all we want for her, is for her to be happy. So when you see that, and you think back to that day in the hospital, what do you want to tell the doctors? You better go back to school. <laughs> if you measure Maurice's progress by inches, measure Joshua's by miles. What music does to his life is remarkable. 
We learned how to walk. We learned how to brush our teeth. We learned, basically, we learned how to eat with the spoon, picking it up. We've done it all through music, basically. Four. But Joshua was actually lost in that world until he met therapist Alan Turi. He'll use music as a way to um, keep the world from him. Alan put it um, better than anybody else has ever put Joshua to me in an evaluation that Joshua didn't want anyone in his world and that he had a beautiful world and he was going to teach Josh how to share it. And after 17 sessions, Robin Shaw thought she saw a miracle. Alan was playing a tune. I think it was Swanee River. Oh, God. And Josh went in and played, oh, God, was that not great? Went in, not only picked up the tune, but went from key to key. And where did he get it from? Where does he get that? The man upstairs. session. God, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. Because that session made everything that I struggled for, you know, I mean, it really did. I would the running there and the paying someone $50 just to get to music and not being able to pay for the lesson made it all worthwhile. <laughs> The breakthrough came two years ago, but every session remains a challenge with this little boy. Joshua tantrums, if they take too long, so they'll make him wait a little bit because he has to wait. And then Joshua gets his cue. He gets up and it's a total different child that goes in there. You have a big campfire. Lord of and Robbins opened the door for us to come in there and show it. He'll be going there forever. Do you feel that Joshua truly is talented musically? I think there's um, a spark of genius in him going on inside his head. <laughs> and he's content and he's happy when he's doing that too. The happiest. I should think a lot of parents come here with the expectation, my child will be cured. We can't normalize. We don't make that promise. We try to unfold the abilities we can reach and develop them. So the child has more equipment for living. Go ahead, you can hold the cup. Don't try to fool daddy. What are your hopes for Marissa for the future? You just want her to be happy and healthy. That's pretty basic. Reach, very good girl. If you had to sum up what the music therapy has done to make the world Josh lives in a little brighter, a little more hopeful, what would you say? He's not just a little boy sitting in his own little world with his own little things. He gets into a world with other people now. I see this reaching ultimate heights, ultimate heights. And all I can say is that I love them. I love them all.